All right, are we on? Are we on? Let's see. Greetings, ladies and gents, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm not sure if this works or not. I'm not sure if at the moment we are online or we are not. Um, so let me know. I don't see any. I don't see any viewers at the moment. Hey, so we are. We are online. We are live. Finally, this technical issues, man. I didn't think I will. Uh, I will have such technical uh, problems. All right, so uh, we're live. This is the first time I'm live, and I hope I don't tell anything, I don't uh, talk anything stupid because obviously it's not a normal video. I cannot just, uh, I cannot just uh, edit everything. I just have to go with the flow. So uh, everybody that's online, that's on the stream, uh, welcome. Uh, feel at home. Uh, Mr. Ali Mrad, uh, Sar Faraz, all right, Spot Me Fly, that's that's a good name. Travel with Sahil, all right, amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about my nose as well. It's uh, as you can see, I'm speaking clearly, so that's that's a good sign, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so 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 so. Let's uh, thanks, take things first. Yeah, so uh, my nose is okay. My nose is okay. I had the surgery four days ago. Um, basically, the reason why I had the surgery, and you probably saw some of the, the videos and some of the stuff um, that I posted, especially on Instagram, um, because I couldn't sleep well at night, and this has been a common thing for the last maybe four four years yeah four or five years basically i was using this otrevin this nasal decongestant and um i had a lot of troubles right i'm it's not nice to use this this thing every single night every single time before bed so i knew i had to do a surgery just to fix the thing you know and um i took advantage of my vacation now right now i'm on vacation i have 10 days vacation uh, maybe I'll take a, a few more sick days just because they restricted me to fly. I mean, I'm not supposed to fly after this operation. My nose looks okay. My nose looks normal, like, as you can see, right? My nose is, is still the same. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Yeah, it's uh, right now I have some things up my nose. Um, how to say, like there's some, some plastic uh, holding things that they hold the tissue properly. So I have to get rid of those in like four or five days, and after that I can I can breathe properly. Now it's now it's just okay, but I cannot still uh, breathe uh, clearly. So it's coming. That will be coming soon. Um, so my YouTube setup. I don't know why I had this issue going online. To be honest, guys. To be honest with you, because I I did it before like in a unlisted mode, private mode, and it worked. And then I went live normally, and it didn't work. So I don't know what's up. I don't know what's up. This YouTube man. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, my setup right now. So I have this microphone here. Oops. I don't know if you can guys hear me properly. If you can hear me nice and the audio is clear, just uh, yeah, leave a comment down below, like uh, in the in the live section. Tell me, do you hear me clearly? Do you hear me nicely? Am I uh, loud enough? Am I low? Uh, just uh, let me know because I can adjust some things here. Um, and uh, I'm using my webcam, um, separate webcam to record this. It's not my phone. And if this didn't work, if I still couldn't go on online, I would have just used my phone. I was just say, heck with it. No problem. I will just use my phone. So. <laughs> Yeah, but it's better if you have a dedicated microphone like this, so then you can properly uh, speak, and it's 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 better, it's nicer. Uh, okay, I'll just pause for a little to read your comments. Hello from India. All right, hi from UAE. Greetings to you. Hope you are good after the surgery. Yes, indeed, I am at the moment. Um, guys, I had to sleep upright with my head elevated for like three nights. 
Like I couldn't, I couldn't lay, I usually sleep on my side and now I just slept like, like it was like a mummy, you know, like on my, on my back. I cannot sleep on my back generally. So it's really uncomfortable. So still I managed to get some sleep. I was tired after the operation. And by the way, by the way, general anesthesia guys. So if you go to general anesthesia, it's just, it's just, it's just like the whole world cuts off, just uh, blackness, just darkness, nothing. There is a void, right? There is a void in space. You, I cannot even call anesthesia a sleep. I cannot call it sleep, to be honest. So anyway, yeah, a very interesting experience. Um, uh, but anyway, the doctors were amazing and everything. The hospital will actually talk about this on a different, uh, on a different video, I think. Um, hi, bro. From where do you belong? So I'm Romanian. Uh, there are still new subscribers and new people around here. You know, we don't really know each other uh, so much. So of course, there will be some questions here. Um, bro, I'm working in Qatar Airways as a customer service agent. Amazing. So audio is clear. That's good to know, guys. Thank you so much. Um, you will not go to Romania? No. So this vacation, I will not go to Romania and I'm not planning to go to Romania because of the surgery. I have restrictions to travel. And not only this, um, I cannot work, like fly as normal. And I cannot fly as a passenger either because I cannot be in the cabin basically because of the nose. So I have to be, I have to be a sensitive with my nose something like that anyway um welcome back alex miss you on youtube you know the, the angela always with nice comments that's amazing appreciate it uh thank you so much i'm i'm happy that to hear that uh, the sound is good can you say my name please all right uh, i will try but uh yeah don't hold me accountable for it i will just try right sabri abdul kadir was it good? All right. Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm not married. Okay, guys. So <laughs> now we have to get in this video. We have to get it properly in this video. Um, so there's a few upcoming changes. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm actually on the way to buy a car right now. My sister is coming to uh, Dubai she got a job with emirates so i didn't really talk about my family so far on my channel like not much um so my brother my brother was in qatar airways for for a few years and now my sister just got a job with emirates my brother just left qatar she's now in uh, he's now in uh, in spain but my sister got the job with Emirates. Um, she didn't get it with Etihad, but she, she got it with Emirates, with our neighbors. So that's really good. And I'm really happy as well because I will basically have family in uh, in the UAE, which is amazing. And, um, you know, yeah, it's not Etihad, it's Emirates, but it's still, you know, it's, it's very um, close to me. As you guys know, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, they're very close cities to each other. Um, they're basically one hour drive away. And at least now I'll have a reason to go in Dubai more often because usually I'm a lazy prick. And I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't go much, especially lately in the last two years. Yeah, sure. That's also because of COVID and, and other things. Uh, and the fact that I sold my car and now I don't have a car, but that's also on the way. So there's many things that I have to do. There's many things I have to do. And I'm also sharing this with you. Um, don't you feel homesick? I do not, to be honest, because even, even yesterday I had a video call with my father. So, you know, I'm in touch with my family at all times. You know, nowadays we have Zoom and, you know, all these apps and we can talk with uh, with our parents. And, uh, uh, you know, I actually feel sometimes that if I were to be more at home, it's just going to be more, um, how to say, I will just be, you know, hey, my parents, they're there all the time. And now it's like, oh, I miss you. You know, it's, it's like, it's it's nice somehow. You know, it's, I mean obviously don't want to be apart from your family for too long but somehow somehow it's it's interesting it's nice okay uh i love you handsome bro from bangladesh um are you a member of mile high club 
Guys, I, I don't want to share anything and I will not share anything related to that question um, on a public platform like this. You inspire me. So a month, a few months ago, I applied for a cabin position with Emirates. And now I'm in my final stages. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. So guys, so many people, so many people across YouTube, across my Instagram, they um, they write me and they say, hey, you know, I got the job. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm in Emirates now or I'm having my assessment for uh, Etihad right now. I mean, I, I passed. I passed my assessment for the other so on and so forth so so many new joiners as i said before they're uh, joining those airlines um obviously the purpose with my youtube channel is not only is not only um airlines and stuff i actually plan to do more content around abu dhabi and dubai um maybe do some you know restaurants places to go beach time stuff like that you know exercise outdoors um more stuff like this is coming it's on the way um i do like to be a like a hermit you know living inside my room oftentimes and this way i can just do videos uh from my desk and like i'm doing this live right now but uh yeah it, it all depends it's 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 a uh, you know it's a give or take. Something. Some. Sometimes I'm. I'm an extrovert. Sometimes I'm more of an introvert. I guess. Uh, from my. All right. Uh, Ilias from Morocco. Cheers, buddy. Uh, when are you going to get married, man? I don't know. What, what's up with this? Quote? Like I don't. Uh, I don't plan anything at the moment. Um, and I, I. To be honest, if I have a relationship, I don't know if I will share it too much with youtube you know what i mean like i still i still like to keep my my private life private and stuff like that but uh yeah yeah if if a relationship comes if a marriage comes you know i mean never say never uh we're gonna see what's happening by the way guys i, I have a beard as you guys can see <laughs> So that's that's why i never i never actually keep a beard because my beard is so bad like now it's I think one week plus, and you can see it's just nibble. I'm still basically a teenager. I'm a 20 year old, 28. I'm a 28 year old teenager still. So I'm not growing a proper beard. You know, sometimes I look at my colleagues, especially Arabic colleagues. They have nice, you know, thick proper beard. Me, I'm just waiting for my beard still. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. All right, greetings, ladies and gents, for everybody that's new here on the stream. Uh, not many views, uh, but that's to be expected. You know, it's a live video, and I had mm, technical challenges for half an hour. So, uh, yeah, don't expect much. So, yeah, my sister will be coming in Dubai, so really excited for that. I'm really, uh, really excited for that. Um, you know, guys... Even if your family is, is away, uh, even if your family is not in your presence at all times, uh, I think family is like the most important thing on the planet, you know, because you can always have money and stuff um, and you can earn money. You can have a good lifestyle and everything. But family, it's like not really replaceable. Right. So, yeah, if you have your family by your side, you know, the rest are all uh, they will come with with time um all right so i have a, i have a thing that i want to talk with you guys about um it's about uh asking a lot of uh, dms and stuff like this on on my um on my instagram and many times you might i even have some comments on youtube and you guys saying okay why don't you answer my questions you know i how can how can i become a cabin crew how can i get a job in dubai how can i do this and that and uh, you gotta understand guys my time is also limited right so i don't have all the time in the world um i'm also human you know maybe in my free time i like to to play video games or just go to the beach or maybe i don't have free time because i'm flying all the time <laughs> but uh yeah so my, my time is limited and i i don't want to sit with the phone all the time and uh, type and for that reason, if you want to have a serious conversation with me, let's say you have a particular case and uh, you want to become a flight attendant or you want a job in Dubai or there's some financial thing that I'm, I might help you with, you could book my time 
uh, there's always a link in the description of the videos. You can book my time. We can have a call, right? A call for 30 minutes, up to 30 minutes. And you can tell me exactly all the things. And then I can provide with answers. And, and uh, I think that's a better medium uh, of conversation than uh, the occasional uh, chat on uh, Instagram. Because to be honest, many of the DMs, they don't even appear or they appear in the hidden section and they disappear in like five or seven days if I haven't looked at them. Or So if you guys want, let's say, a private mm, kind of uh, call with me, you can uh, book my time. There is a link in the description. Um, yeah. Hello from Turkey. A quick, a quick tip to crack to particularly Etihad Airways. Um, yeah, so we can we can talk about it. No worries. Um, yeah, there's there's many things, guys. So when you ask for advice, um, you have a particular case. You live in a particular country. Um, you have a particular background with a particular degree in something, or you have a, a particular high school. So each case, each case is different. That's why I was saying I better have a conversation with you privately because each and every case is different, and um, the advice I give you right here publicly may not be the same or may not be suitable for somebody else so if i give public advice yeah it's general but you know you might have a different case right um hey this tattoo there is okay this you know there's there's many things um i have work in this job I, am i okay to become a cabin crew now so uh, there's many p particular uh, things. A uh, quick tip to crack Etihad Airways. So to go and to succeed to the interview, um, I would say, yeah, go go with confidence and with the belief that you will make it. Like I remember when I um, when I applied for it, I just said to myself, I'm just going there to, you know, to basically take the interview. I'm, I'm not going to participate. I'm going to take the interview. You know? I'm just going with that attitude. Only that thing can help you generally. And, you know, it's a general tip. It's a general advice, but it can help you so much. So it's a thing about attitude. Hello from Kenya. I have Kenyan people watching. That's amazing. Hope you are now better after the surgery. Yes. I am. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for all the messages, like on Instagram, all the comments um, on the post that I made about the, the surgery. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I appreciate everybody, um, everybody of you guys. Uh, being cabin crew is difficult. Is it bad for our health? Um, so it's it's a yes on it's a yes and no because there's so many other jobs there really bad for your health maybe even more so than uh, becoming a, a flight attendant or flying uh, frequently i would say here depends how you behave uh, let's say if you have a reckless lifestyle you like to drink and smoke or you don't eat right you don't care about your sleep routine then yeah it's it's not a good job it's not a good, the, the right job for you but but if you know how to take care of yourself you can last some time Obviously, it's uh, it's not easy, but uh, it's it's manageable. I do appreciate, uh, and I know if I will um, go back to a normal schedule routine, let's say a job nine to five, if I go back to that, I will miss having three days off, one after the other, after after an ultra long haul flight. I will miss that, you know. I will just yeah, I will miss that, like having the ability to have days off in a row to request for days off or you know, 30 days vacation a year. That There's there's some really nice things and uh, advantages. Um, hello from Croatia. Hi, Mariana. I, I know you. I, I comment a lot on my videos sometimes. Greetings, Aditi, as well. Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, TikTok. So... <laughs> Guys, I actually I have actually made the TikTok account. Um, yeah, I, I should be ashamed of myself, really, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I will make a TikTok account um, just to have another social media to share on YouTube and to ha actually help me with the shorts because I've been thinking to focus on some shorts as well. Um, especially on board. So that's one of the things I also want to do. 
it's uh, it's coming soon. YouTube Shorts and some TikToks. I don't know if you guys are into those things, but um, many people seem to be into those things. So you know, I might I might put some shorts there and some uh, some TikTok. You know what? I will actually pin the TikTok account uh, if I can find the link. Guys, be patient with me here. I will just uh, put the the new TikTok that I have. I hope it's the right li link. If it's not, I'm in trouble. Um, let's see. Let's see. All right. So let's write right here. All right. And let's see. All right, guys, so this is my TikTok account. Uh, I will pin this comment and um, you can give me a follow. I don't have any followers. It's just a new account. It's uh, newly created, right? So uh, you can go there, follow me. And you know what? The first, the first 50 people that uh, follow me on TikTok, I will follow you right back and you will forever be there. So... Why not? Let's just do this challenge. I have nobody on my TikTok. I didn't share it. I didn't do anything. I created it, but it's just it's just there. Um, do you guys enjoy TikTok? Do you do you like it? To be honest, I find it quite childish. Um, but I digress. It's like it's like it's it's one of those new things, right? Hi, din Romania. All right, uh, un romanaș de nostru. Buna, um, Scotland, all the way from Scotland, man. I love, I love Edinburgh. Amazing place. Um, one of one of my favorite layovers. We don't fly there anymore. I actually think I had one of those comments like, "Which layovers do you like?" Um, I don't see the comment anymore. Yeah, your favorite three layovers so far. Everybody's every time, every time somebody asks me about the layovers and which is my favorite destination, it's it's a difficult question, and um, I would say every place has a special, uh, you know, has a special something. You cannot really, I cannot generalize because mainly I do like, you know, high rise modern cities, but I also like. Uh, beach type destinations that I can just uh, chill and you know enjoy the sun and stuff like that. Obviously, I live in in a country with a lot of sun, but I digress. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically, I, I I really love sunny places like Maldives and Phuket. I always used to um, want to fly there and to request the flights there. But uh, also, you know, European cities or like futuristic cities like Singapore, you know, Tokyo, you know, Asia is amazing. I've been to LA, which was uh, quite cool. Uh, you know, Santa Monica Beach, uh, USA, you know, USA is quite polarizing. There's so many good things, but uh, so many things that are polarizing at the same time. But basically, our entire culture is now based somehow on... Uh, on USA, you know. Um, in India, TikTok is banned, is it? Man, I didn't know that. I mean, I heard um, I heard some news about it. Like they wanted to ban TikTok some time ago, but I didn't know it's banned, banned. That's crazy. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, bro, if you really want to increase your subscribers, Please try to speak Hindi language, man. I will. Uh, I will try to take that advice, but I, you know, um, living here in the UAE, I told myself that I want to learn Arabic. I want to learn uh, um, to speak Arabic language. So I came here and uh, I was like, okay, let's let's try to speak Arabic. But the problem is everybody speaks English. When everybody speaks English, you don't have a reason to learn another language like Arabic. Uh, 
Even though I live here in the UAE, I live here in Abu Dhabi, ladies and gents. So, <laughs> what's the deal then? Yeah, um, one some 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 years ago, my brother, when he was in college, went with uh, Erasmus, which is like a college thingy, a college program for students. He went to France, and um, he he was there for six months, around six months. In those six months, he learned French at the conversational level, like at the normal conversational level in six months. Obviously, he did have a background in French. So do I. I have a background in French language, but um, it's nothing like that. If you go to a country and they don't speak English, that's when you will learn the language properly. This is the this is the truth, but English is different. So English is different because English, you know, everybody is surrounded by English. We have it everywhere. So you know, it's it's just accessible. I would say it's an accessible language. That's why it's you know the most popular and it's easy to learn uh, by anybody. But if you want to learn a foreign foreign. Uh, <laughs> Uh, trembling in my words if you want to learn a foreign language the best thing is to go to that country that you want to learn language from and be there <laughs> and presumably the people are speaking that language um yeah i'm enjoying a cup of black tea with milk ladies and gents this is called english breakfast and i don't know why i'm doing this because it's already evening time and it has caffeine basically so I guess I had to be prepared for this stream and for the technical difficulties associated with this stream. Um, uh, sorry for that, guys. Sorry that you had to wait before the stream uh, for so long. All right. So um, have you ever got a layover in India? Yes. Uh, yes, I did. Uh where did they went to in India that they had a layover? I think in Chennai, Bangalore. Bangalore was awesome. I remember I went to a restaurant. Instead of having Indian food, I had pasta. <laughs> oh, God. Horrible. Um, but anyway, uh, it was nice. Bangalore was nice, actually. I, I like Bangalore. Where else have I been in layover in uh, India? I've been to, yeah, Bangalore and Chennai, I think. Chennai. I also been to Bangladesh to Dhaka. Man, we had an amazing, amazing um, hotel in Dhaka. Like the cabin crew have an amazing hotel in Dhaka. Also, I've been to Kolkata. Yeah, I, I should have remembered Kolkata. I actually did a video there, and uh, I, I was videoing in the hotel room. Yes, Kolkata. Um, hello from India. A question, Alex, 21 year old is required at the time of joining or at the time of the application to Etihad? Simple answer, at the time of joining. You can apply when you are 20, right? You can still apply at 20 years old. And uh, at 21, that's when you actually join. So basically you are arriving in Abu Dhabi. You have to be 21 <laughs> for the job, for the job. Show us pictures when you were a model. Oh, man, those times. I still have uh, pictures on my Instagram from when I was doing some modeling. But you have to really scroll down a lot. So, uh, yeah. Autopilot 320. Hey, it was a pleasure meeting you at the air show. Let me know if you ever come to Orlando. Uh, I'll take you flying in a Cessna. Man, if you if you take me flying in a Cessna, we have a deal. <laughs> that's that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, to be honest, I met a lot of people at the air show, but uh, I think I might remember, but I'm not sure. Maybe if I see you, I will remember you. But uh, a lot of people at the air show. The air show. So basically, what we were what we were doing at the air show uh, 
we had the promotional event with uh, Etihad Airways at Dubai Air Show um, just uh, just last year, and it was it was amazing. Really, uh, you get to see a lot of aircraft, a lot of planes. It was really a nice experience. I did make a vlog about it. The vlog didn't really catch the whole thing, but you know, I tried my best when I was when I was free. But uh, one really interesting thing that we did as the Etihad crew, we're like four or five of us, and we just went scrolling in the aircraft. And because we have the badges and the uniforms, even the private jets, they let us go inside because, um, you know, those private jets, they don't really allow the public. You have to be like, uh, you have to have an invitation in order to visit a private jet at the air show. But we were like, hey, we're crew, you know. Let's go. So it was very funny. Yeah, we uh, we ended up going in a lot of private jets. You know, the Gulf Streams and uh, I don't even know their names, but they're really really nice. They have bed inside. They have living room inside. The TV and you know the everything like that. So yeah, obviously people. You know, some crew they're working there, right? So it's their daily job to be on a private jet. Um, and as I said before, it's it's. Uh, it's a nice career path, I would say. So many people, including girls that I know here in Etihad, they upgrade, let's say, to the private jet. Um, they basically apply to become a private jet cabin crew and they get the interview if their minimum, they require, I think, three years in Etihad or in Emirates or other airlines. And you have to have, I think business class experience or first class experience. So if you have that, uh, you can apply to, to be uh, private, uh, to go private. So, you know, it's better money, it's better, you know, lifestyle, let's say. And, uh, it depends, you have a lot of standbys, but uh, overall it's, it's, it's an amazing job, you know, you're in a private jet. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, that's enough with me la rambling about the, uh, the private jet uh man there's a, a lot of comments here right, well, let me just let me just read it is laser treatment in phase good safe laser treatment in phase what is what kind of laser treatment um is that for the beard yeah i guess so i I'm, i don't have any experience with with that Hi there, Philip here from the UK. Philip, I saw your comment. You were the first person to comment on my live stream and I was trying to go live and YouTube was keeping me in a loop. I couldn't go live. So I saw your comment. <laughs> um, I really, I really did. So yeah. Um, a few years ago, I flew Etihad Manchester to Sydney via Abu Dhabi. Had a great flight, even in economy. I'm really happy to hear that. Many people, they dis economy because, you know, obviously, you know, it's less space, you're more cramped, it's not like business class. Um, I would say economy across all the major airlines is, is pretty similar, just as in the seat features and stuff like this. Obviously, you have a seat, it's not too much space, but you have also a screen in front of you, you have some armrests, you know, it's economy. It's uh, not rocket science, but it's nice, it's nice. Um I personally, in economy, I uh, I can sleep okay. Like I'm I'm 185, which is six feet one. I can sleep okay in economy. Yeah, uh, I'm happy that that you had a, a good flight. Uh, but you know what, guys? Actually, many times the flight does not depends on the seat or whatever. You know, it's it's about the experience, the overall thing. You know. Did you watch some nice movies? Did you had a good lunch on board? Uh, was the cabin crew nice to you? You know, uh, were the toilets clean? Right. It's 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 one thing that really matters. Like if I'm a if I'm a passenger and uh, I go on the plane and the toilets aren't clean, it's it's not a nice experience. Obviously, we are in charge of doing that. Who else? <laughs> especially on board and especially on long flights. Um, okay, let me. Let me read here. How long did it take for Golden Call after your final interview? Um, for me, Etihad, back then, it took it took a weekend, like a few days. I think I think four days. 
So after the interview, in four days, I knew that I'm going to become a cabin crew. But that was then. Now it's different. Now it's, you know, it's a lot of assessments taking uh, taking place. Um, so it, it really depends, you know, depends. Now they did do really need crew. They do really need cabin crew in Etihad. So mm-hmm. things are moving fast, let's say. They are moving fast. Uh, thank you for all your questions about nose. Nose is good. Nose is okay. Um, we are rocking. Uh, did you clear at first attempt or it took some time? So, okay. Now I think I have to talk about this. I haven't really spoken about this. Maybe I talked in a post or something. I went to other airlines interviews as well. Not only at Etihad at that time, like that was five and a half years ago. And I succeeded as well in other airlines interviews. I took them all. They were, they were all close together, right? The interviews were close together. And uh, I went to all of them and I took all of them. I will not name the companies, but there's two more companies, right? <laughs> Um, in the Middle East, yeah. Um, so I took all three interviews at a short distance from each other, basically. And I would say the Etihad interview back then was the most personal one. The recruiters were the most nice, I would say, from all the airlines. And uh, it was a uh, good experience. You know, I really enjoyed my interview. So overall... That was a good good thing. Plus, they really reached out with the email very soon after the interview was over. So I just decided I will go with Etihad. Uh, and that's what I did. So I do not regret that at all. Um, do you know Alex Swami? Yeah, he's my friend. We are friends. He now recently promoted to uh, Cabin Senior. He's, uh, yeah, he's my friend. He's Romanian as well. He has a wife, Dorina. I also know her. Can you bid for your flights or do you have to take what the company roster for you? Uh, I can bid. We used to bid for flights, for days off, for having a flight with a friend, for like so many things we could bid before of COVID. But now we can just bid for days off and that's about it. We're still waiting um, for this to happen, you know, for... uh, the ability to bid for flights again hopefully soon (laughs) because it's really nice to request your flights and to get them and to have a certain destination that you really wanted it's absolutely amazing so yeah um speaking of which i would definitely request for madrid spain because my brother is there at the moment i want to see my brother and i haven't seen him for so long Sergio, if you're seeing this, if you're seeing this live stream, probably you're not because you're working. But if you do see this live stream, I love you, bro. Yep. Uh, no, really, uh, guys, about the um, about the requests, it's really nice when you and I always used to get my requests. Okay, uh, I'm behind with the comments. When are you coming to India? Delhi. So in Delhi, we have a turnaround. We don't we don't stay. We don't have a layover. Um, sorry, want to see? Answer me. Uh, all right. When I was a kid, every year I went to Spain. And now I speak it fluently. Exactly. That's what I was talking about, guys. You know, you will speak fluently a language if you really want so. But you have to move to that country. <laughs> it's crazy. And now I speak it fluently. Okay. Without have been studied. So without studying before. Please, can you ask me how can I improve my English to advanced level? Okay, I see. I see that it needs a bit of improvement. Um yeah, I don't want to make fun of you. No, I will not make fun of you. But uh, yeah, obviously, um, it does need a bit of improvement. How do you improve the English language to an advanced level of practice? Practice, 
practice, practice, practice, practice, and many more practices. And you know what, guys? You know, I, I even have uh, books here in English I used to read. And uh, let me let me let me take. Maybe I can find. So uh, let's see what we have here. Books, books in English we have here. Books, books in English, guys. Books in English, really. Oh, this is this is a really nice one. George Orwell, really good. All right. So let me just put my headphones back. Uh, this was the first book. I read in English uh, fully, like uh, just a regular book, not something that they give you in school or something. Uh, I think I just picked it up from my colleague or something. Anyway, it's a very cheesy, best-selling kind of a love story and stuff. So not my usual cup of tea. It's called The Choice by Susan Lewis. Um, it's uh, it's a book about, I don't know, this girl gets pregnant and whatever, and she loves somebody else. I, anyway, it was it was quite interesting read, you know, like it keeps you it keeps you there. But uh, but what I'm trying to say here is it's very important to um, get something in your hands that you enjoy to read and just read it. And to be honest, this book in particular, it was not difficult to read. As far as I remember, I read this, I think, in 2014. I don't know why I still have it here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in 2014, I was in Greece and I read this book. I read it in a few days. Uh, read, guys. Read. It's it's so easy, you know. And uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually to blame here a bit because I haven't read... A book for a while i'm reading uh, george orwell right now uh but i didn't touch the book for a, a while so i should practice what i preach um but for example for me right now speaking and making youtube videos i'm also learning we're always learning guys we're always always learning um life is a learning curve is a learning process uh right Let's see. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna read a couple of more comments here because I see, I see more and more. Have you ever flown with a male cabin crew who was five four five five height? Do you think Etihad would hire a male with its height? Um, the question is, the sorry, the answer is yes. I have. Um, I actually had a good friend of mine. He's even in a vlog that I made. If you search Alexander George Perth, Perth, Australia, you'll find the vlog I'm talking about maybe three three years ago, four years ago, one of my first vlogs. Um, and I was with him in Perth, um, Australia, and we were doing some outdoor exercise. And he is, he's, he's not tall. Like he's, yeah, he's maybe five five or something really not not tall so you know it just tells you that yeah it's it's possible it's it's not common it's not a common occurrence like yeah obviously maybe maybe taller is preferred i don't know i'm just saying maybe but but um i wouldn't rule out other um heights definitely not and uh what i always preach is uh, does it you know does it cost much to try you know you can just try your uh, luck try your best and probably you'll get it you never know and same with age same with age uh, people saying that uh, oh you know with this airlines you have to be 25 that's complete nonsense i met now new joiners over 30 so don't come and tell me that uh, oh it's it's only young young people obviously yeah there's a lot of young people um, under 35 under uh, 25 but there's all ages guys uh before and over 30 
Um, have you ever thought of joining Emirates? Greetings from Uruguay. So the advantage I would have in Emirates would be just more destinations. Like the advantage in Emirates is that they have the most international destinations in the world. I believe, mm, I think that's true. I think that's true. So there's a lot of destinations that you can visit with uh, with Emirates. Um which is great if you want to travel, you know, experience new places and stuff. But to be honest, I'm, you know, I, I never thought I would say this, but I'm okay with, like, I'm not really a travel addict kind of guy. Like, I really enjoy my layovers, and many times I go out in the layovers, obviously not so much nowadays because of COVID restrictions, but, but many times uh, I used to go out in layovers and uh, visit places. But in my spare time, in my vacation, usually I just go back to Romania, visit my family, right? Like I will not travel some more apart from my layovers. And and you can see this with so many of the cabin crew um, in our community nowadays. Actually, cabin crew in general, even in the days off, in even when they have free time, they just pack their bags and they go somewhere for a few days because why not? And that's that's amazing, you know, that's that's one of the perks of the job. That's great. But I think I'm more just more comfortable. Some sometimes I think I'm older than I am. I'm becoming a grandfather. <laughs> no, the truth is I just uh, I just think that the layovers are already enough traveling so I don't travel extra in my free time. Uh, so, uh, going back to your question about joining Emirates. Yeah, that's, that's it. Now, obviously my sister, she will be in Emirates as I just talked about, uh, uh, before she's joining Emirates. So yeah, that'll be a good reason, but uh, I can always see her. I'm, I'm one hour away from Dubai, so it's not an issue really. It's not the issue. And for people, they say, oh, the uniform is this and that. Like, it's a personal preference if you like the uniform in Etihad or in Emirates or in Qatar. I think uh, they all have very nice uniforms, you know, special. Every uniform is special, you know, attention to detail and stuff. So, uh, but uh, more so the girls, they all like, yeah, uniform, you know, the hat. Yeah, the hat is cool. Um, all right, I'm going to read the comment in Romanian by Christy. Ce urmăresc recruții de la cei care aplică pentru acest post de lucru? Mm. Um, șansele de a fi acceptat scad cu vârsta. All right, so the interviews are usually, if you go to Emirates, Qatar or Etihad, in the careers section, you will find the interviews including in Romania. There's a lot of interviews in Romania, mainly in Bucharest, but also other cities as Timisoara, Cluj. So I would just advise you to go to those pages, the page of the airline, and you will find all the details there about the interview. Um, does the chances of being accepted decreases with age? Well, you know, what can I say about this? You know, I don't want to be... Uh, uh, you know, I would, I would just say this, you know, nobody lives forever, guys, right? I mean, I guess, I guess so, maybe, yeah. Laser treatment for, okay. Bro, I need info about your surgery. I texted you on Insta. Guys, many times the texts, they don't appear or they're like in hidden section. It's It's a mess on my Instagram. Okay, okay, I, I do want to read this. Is this a rumor that cabin crew can't post their pics in the uniform as I've seen your posts or Insta? I don't think it is. Guys, it's not true. You can post whatever. I mean, I post a lot of uniform pictures, right? It's fine. It's okay. Company appreciates that, actually. It's, uh, it's like um, marketing. But, but, you have to be professional while you're doing it. Um, yeah. Um, are there a Colombian cabin crew flying with for Etihad? Um, yeah, yeah. I met Colombian crew. Now there's not too many, there, but there is a few. I've flown with at least two or three, as far as I know. 
Okay, so Philip, I have just retired from a lifetime in travel and I just wanted you to know how much I enjoy your YouTube videos. No, that, that's so nice. I, I don't know what to say about when I when I read a comment like this, guys, I, I don't really uh, it's 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 amazing, you know. I, I really appreciate that and I, I want to bring more good content, let's say, to you guys. Um and right back at you, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for the videos. All right. How many countries have you visited? <laughs> a lot. To be honest, a lot. Yeah. Uh, more than more than I think. Um, matter of, I don't know what's the number really. Mm, around 40. Around 40 countries. Maybe more. I never really counted. There is... Um, there's many people a crew that they actually count the countries and they put in the app and there's yeah I should I should do that um can you guys hear me properly yeah okay okay one one uh, one uh, one thing that just happened today is that um, the people came to clean the apartment and the other f flats you know the sorry the other room because tomorrow guys i have a new joiner coming in my apartment so <laughs> uh i've been uh, living by myself for six months no six seven months now since july last year i've been living by myself so right now i will have a new joiner coming to my place one of you guys one of the you know i don't know people applying <laughs> so that's uh, yeah that's pretty cool but to be honest with you, I do enjoy my time alone. I do like to live alone. Um, I'm a lone wolf. So I'll have to readapt with uh, living with a flatmate. Um, my uh, the, the previous flatmate that I had, he was from Ukraine. Uh, he left in uh, July of 2021. Yeah, he went back to Ukraine. He, he went back to Kiev. He got a job there. And, uh, you know, he just wanted to, you know, be back with his family. He had uh, some other plans. Um, he was here for as much as I was, five years, basically. And, uh, yeah, he moved on afterwards. And now I'll have a new flatmate. And the new flatmate is Russian. So, still with Russian speakers. Yeah, he's actually from Russia, as uh, I saw on the briefing um, sheet that we received. He is from Russia. So hopefully it's going to be nice. Um, yeah, uh, one topic that, you know, I I had, I think I, I said something about it in, in a previous YouTube video uh, referring to education in college. And then I had the comment um, by a subscriber that, was saying, oh, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't this education. Education is really important and stuff. And uh, you know, it's 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 uh, different. It's interesting. It's not like on our parents' time anymore, to be honest. On my on my parents' time, if you did do a college, if you went to college, that was really something. Like that really meant a lot. Um, many of you asking me if you should go to college or not. So back then it really meant something. Nowadays, everybody's going to college, everybody. So it's nothing really special. Um, and the problem is like 80% at least of people going to college, they don't actually use their degrees anymore. Maybe used to back, back, back in the day, but nowadays, not really, not really like you end up working in, I don't know, some place that has absolutely no connection with the degree that you finished. I call that wasted time. I call that wasted time, wasted three or four years going to college if, if it's not, uh, if you don't profess in it, right? But everybody's doing that. Um, in the US, they call this STEM. Do you know what, what STEM is, guys? basically means uh, college in uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But also here, there's some other heavy hitters like medicine, uh, law school, right? If you go to those 
colleges, those are professions, right? Let's say you go to medicine. Yeah, at the end of those six years plus another few years residency, you will be a medic, right? So you would go follow a career path. But if you go to, I don't know, psychology, uh, history college, like the options that you will have after you finish that college are very, very limited, are very narrow. Um, I'm not saying, you know, it's it's bad or anything, but many people wanting to get in aviation, for example, they ask me, okay, do you have to go to college? I mean, what are my options? Everybody's going to college, so I should go to college as well. Well, if you, let's say you're 18, you just finished high school, and let's say you have some summer job experience, you can apply directly to become a, a flight attendant in the cabin crew. You can apply directly for an airline. They accept 18 years of age. And bam, you are working. You're you're earning your bread. So you skipped college, but you still you still uh, you know you have a good paycheck and you start life earlier. So you have an advantage. You have an advantage. Do you know what I mean? And I'm talking uh, uh, about this from the point of view of a person who finished college. I did three years. Uh, I did geography tourism. So I really enjoyed my college. I was first in class at the point. I uh, was earning a scholarship as well in back in Romania. It was fun. It was nice. If I were to do it again, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I might have just skip, skipped it if, I, if, I, if I'm thinking now back. But anyway, anyway, uh, let me let me know, guys, what what you think about this? Um, what you think about this topic? You know, it's quite a controversial topic with with colleges. You know, with uh, graduating and uh, or having a college degree after you finish high school, it's something that everybody does. And uh, to be honest, in the West, okay, let's take the West because you know I'm from Europe. Whatever, let's take the West many places, many good colleges, the college degree costs so much. You will never have those money back. <laughs> like it's it's just, uh, I think it's a bad deal. It's a, it, became, it became a bad deal. I don't know when it became a bad deal, but now it's a bad deal. Anyway, so many people, I would say, can actually jumpstart their life if they, uh, if they just skip it. Um, now... You might say, Alex, you are talking bad about education right now. It's not good. I'm not really. Education, guys, it's so important. And you are are studying and learning even way after you finish college or high school or whatever. You know, learning is a part of life. You know, I might be learning every day something, you know, and uh, I can study things on my own. And sometimes I feel like I'm studying. I would study a topic better on my own than if a college teacher was... Uh, teaching me on the subject. Okay, let's take IT. Let's take IT. Just just for just a bracket here from our original content. Let's take IT guys, right? Because IT is so popular nowadays when it comes to colleges. If you go to college in IT, by the time you finish college, uh, the information is already redundant. It has like you have to start all over because the technology just moves away from that so fast that you you don't actually use what you learn. So you have to learn new things constantly. It's just a, a good example, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's that's a whole bracket from uh, our topics here. But uh, I just I just thought I would jump in with the topic of, uh, of college. Yeah, college is... Uh, College is an advantage, I would say, when it comes to uh, becoming a flight attendant, but it's not a requirement. Like many people, um, they can get the job without going to college. Let me read some of your comments, guys. Um, Yasif. Hey, Alex, is there any choice in serving alcohol? I believe you are asking me right now if you have an option between being able to serve alcohol or you can refuse to serve alcohol, like being a Muslim. Uh, no, sir, you have no choice because the airline is not dry. So basically, we do have alcohol on board. We are serving passengers alcohol. 
So everybody that gets the job has to do it, unfortunately. Um, I know it's not ideal, especially if you follow, um, you know, if a certain religious path. I know it's not ideal, but um, yeah, it's it's a must in uh, in here. Uh, Saudi Airlines, though, it's a dry airline, for example, so there is no alcohol there. You are handsome. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Is this your dream job? It's it's my job for the past five years and a half. So I think, yeah, I, I guess I guess you could say that. Um, uh, all right. Wow. I have comments that I haven't really read. Um, um, how many kilograms of luggage allowed for the cabin crew on board guys 32 we have we have business class allowance basically so if i'm traveling as a cabin crew i have business class allowance even though i'm flying economy so that's one of the benefits there's there is a lot of benefits to this yeah um hi alex love your videos Keep it up. Maybe you can make a video about becoming a flight attendant when you are married or have a long-term relationship, stuff like that. Well, I haven't really had a long-term relationship for a while now. Uh, it's been it's been a while, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe I didn't really look for one as well. Um, I, I wouldn't say I was avoiding them, but just uh, you know, it just didn't came along. Um, yeah, I would make if if I have a relationship and like a girl that I'm, you know, let's say public with, like I'm posting stuff with with her and stuff. Then maybe, why not? Uh, you can learn English by watching English lessons here on YouTube. You can also read English lessons and any English books and watch movies. Yeah, that's true. You can hire a tutor as well. Yeah, uh, true, true. There's there's so many ways like. What's the what's the saying? There's many ways to skin a cat. Was that the saying? Uh, you know what? I'll just Google it. <laughs> I'm from my laptop here, right in front of me. So uh, many ways to skin a cat. Yes, indeed. This is the this is the quote. It's true. There's many ways to skin the cat. So there's many ways in in order to do the same thing. Uh, what is the best applying from for a cabin crew job abu dhabi or home country home country if you are there um all right so christy he's my age so i'm 28 years of age he's my age and he's planning to apply go ahead brother absolutely go ahead can you tell us your future car brand i do not know I have no idea. If I see a good deal, I will just take it. I do not want something expensive. And to be honest, when I had my Volkswagen Sirocco, amazing car, you know, sports car, fast car, I loved it. But um, one of the reasons I sold it is because I knew that I'm going to have some heavy maintenance to do. Uh, and we, if, if we're talking a sports car, you know, there is, even though the car will not be, expensive when you buy it if you buy it secondhand and stuff um there is always maintenance so i'll try to avoid that but uh, yeah it depends what kind of deal i get uh how can i come to abu dhabi to study from romania you want to study in abu dhabi there's many there's many colleges in abu dhabi actually it's like a huge boom with uh, colleges <laughs> A lot of British colleges, US colleges, they have their own colleges in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So it's crazy. Um, all right. Oh, my God. We are already one hour in, guys. We are one hour in the first live stream. We are one hour in. Yes. 29 likes. Eh, not bad. <laughs> guys, up the likes. If you're on the stream and you haven't liked, give a like yes let's have some fun it's entertainment we're having some entertainment i'm just rambling about things um hey online diploma accepted for cabin crew job so i'm reading this comment online diploma does that mean online college 
Well, if it's a certified college, if you've done the college, yeah, you can just put it in the CV and that's it. Um, so, so I have here a Romanian, another Romanian. Salut, momentan sunt și eu în curs obținind atestatul lui ASA. EACA is like a, it's like a sort of a, a license for cabin crew in Europe. So uh, many people for certain airlines, they have to do this kind of license in Europe, but it's not required for Etihad, Emirates, Qatar and those airlines. So yeah, um, even though you received a negative answer, I would say keep trying, keep trying, never back down guys um what if you don't finish high school so if you want to become a flight attendant and you do not have a high school diploma unfortunately unfortunately you cannot you know it's it's a requirement it's it's a yes or no so i would say finish high school that's it that's it it's not it's not too much of a deal do you listen to the weekend um i don't i don't listen to much music now. like i i'm embarrassed of myself nowadays i just listen like to old songs like metal and rock and uh, when i'm in the gym i listen to hard style you know you know hard style it's you shouldn't listen to that really um yeah i like the weekend the weekend is good i actually been to a concert of theirs in abu dhabi once after the formula one finished they had a concert so i attended that but uh, I, I i'm not listening on the regular hey very happy to see you live very happy as well brother i am excited this is the first live one hour and seven minutes in jesus christ what's happening oh god there is some problem with the audio uh, is there guys if you if you don't hear me well please let me know in the comment section um i hope you can hear me well uh, your live stream has been great and it's been so nice speaking to you in the brackets thank you very much philip you're very kind my friend uh you are a nice guy and your new flatmate is very lucky to share with you i have to go now take care brother um i hope i hope uh, you know the flatmate thing it really it's it's thing of how you how you blend in with the person it's you know it's it's living together it's it's not like friendship i would say I mean, you can obviously you will become friends with your flatmate, right? You have to, but it's it's more than that. It's respecting personal space sometimes. Like many times, I would just be in my room or want to rest, or and then as a flight attendant, we need to manage. Okay, are you going to sleep now? Like, if you're playing music out loud in the living room, you know, I, I cannot sleep. There, there's some things that both parties have to agree with so you can live comfortably and well within the same premises um one of the things in this accommodation for example if uh, the flatmate is in the living room and i'm here in the room and let's say i want to sleep and he, you know he's watching tv or something i will hear so that's one of the things i i like my previous accommodation was old yes but it was so big it was huge you cannot hear anything it was made out of solid bricks this one is more futuristic more nice more modern everything is you know uh, nicely done but you can hear things like you know what i mean so it's it's you know it's uh, advantages and disadvantages uh, back then back then like when i came to etihad we had accommodations all around the city and when i say all around the city i really mean everywhere there were different buildings some better than others should be told but uh, nowadays the etihad accommodation building is kind of standardized like it's basically one one kind of way like that's good because somehow that's good because at least there is a standard right um so some people they don't get oh 
this huge accommodation and other get the oh this is this one is tiny so it's a standard that's that's good i guess but still i kind of miss i kind of miss my previous huge accommodation guys i had the i had like a hockey table in my living room back then like that was just you know that was something else before <laughs> like we had parties with like 40 50 people man like it was craziness uh that was when i joined uh it was just uh yeah it was just something else man now things are more calm obviously it's covid you cannot really do parties and stuff but um uh, people joining right now in the company in etihad uh emirates and other airlines as well it, they're joining under the premises of covid times so it's a different experience i would say than when i was joining you know back then everything is free you know you meet your flatmate you go to you know you go to other places you you have a wild party somewhere and just everybody's there everybody's like going nuts um but nowadays uh, things are chill definitely chill um and it, it it's a requirement to be so as well so Okay, let me let me just read some things. Yeah, by sleeping time in India, I know it's already nine in uh, Dubai, so in India it must be uh, ten forty-five. It must be eleven. Yeah. All right. Let me just let me just read some things, bro. You still look like twenty years old, Marshall. I thank you so much, man. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so, but I do feel that this job is making me somehow older. But it's 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 either that, or it's just the fact that I'm just getting older. So I'm currently working on sales in Abu Dhabi. So can I get more chances to get a cabin crew job? Absolutely, yes. That's uh, if you're working in sales and you're in Abu Dhabi as well. I would say the chances are uh, are quite high. It looks good for you, man. I'm studying food and beverage service course program. So is that going to be advantage during my cabin crew interview? Yeah, I would say yes. Hello, Alex. I'm your subscriber who is from South Korea. Hi. A lot of South Korean uh, new joiners in Etihad. A lot of them. When I say a lot, I really mean it. It's, uh, it's a lot of South Koreans and they're amazing. Uh, amazing people. Um I recently applied for Qatar Airways, but still waiting for the outcome of the online application. I'm scared I can't make it to the invitation day. Well, don't be scared. So you just have to wait. You just have to wait and see what's the outcome of that. And uh, hopefully it will be in your favor. Fingers crossed. Mm. What made you think that you should join Cabin Queen? First thought came into your mind that you should become cabin crew at what age? <sighs> uh, I was on Facebook one one night and then I saw a sponsored ad for Qatar Airways cabin crew and I, I, I just clicked it by chance and then I saw the interview was in two days. So I just went to the interview and the rest is history. That was my first interview was Qatar Airways, by the way, yes. And I, I did good. I took the interview. Two days, two days. That that was my basically my preparation. Uh, the next day after that night, I went fast to do my photos, to do the business attire photos, print, you know, make prints for passport and ID and whatever documents they required. It was an open day. It was not online back then, so you just have to the, um, go straight with the uh, CV. And uh, yeah, that was it back then. Uh, now there's not really open days. You have you have to be accepted online first, and then you have the assessment. Mm, uh, yeah, it was wild. Um, I like your video and listen to your talks, and I look forward to be like you. Thank you so much, Sylvester. I appreciate that. Greetings, greetings from Abu Dhabi. It should be my flatmate because when I sleep, I'm dead. You can't have a party and I won't hear a thing. Yeah. No, to be honest, I, I would say 
I am a good flatmate myself. Uh, you can ask my previous flatmate. I mean, I'm I'm quite quiet. Like, I'm okay, really. I don't I don't do much parties and stuff. Um, I'm a chilled guy. I'm a chilled dude. Very informative live stream. I'm happy that you think so. So. I had a couple of topics that I already talked about before this uh, comment section thing. Um, but So I had a few topics kind of prepared that I want to talk about. One of them was me at TikTok and one of them was, you know, the whole family thing, my sister coming to the Emirates and, you know, my nose surgery. But other than that, yeah, we, we can just chill in this live stream. We can read the comments, you know, see what other people are asking and we can, we can basically have a productive and entertaining time. Why not? Uh, cabin crew need visa for each country. Depends on the nationality of, of their nationality, basically. But uh, the airline just makes things on um basically we have a crew pass let's say when we go to a country many times you don't sit for visa or anything you just go like normally let's say i let's say i want to go to uh thailand to phuket or something in my days off i do need a visa i will pay for a visa at arrival as a romanian if i go with Etihad as a cabin crew i don't pay nothing i just go as a crew we have a crew lane. We just go. So uh need visa for every kind of no, you just you're just a cabin crew, so it, you're fine. My pleasure. Looking forward to fly with you as well. Uh do they stamp in the passport every time? That's a very good question. That's a very, very good question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do stamp the passport and then we get annoyed with it, like because obviously we don't want that. We don't want passport stamps because they fill up very quickly. If they fill up very quickly, that's an issue. But some countries, uh, for example, I think uh, Russia, I remember they stamped it. I'm not really sure which ones they stamped. Ireland? Ireland? Anyway, some countries, they put a stamp even though we were crew, but they're very few. Most countries, they don't put a stamp in our passports. We can just pass. So we don't have to renew our passport if all the pages are full of stamps. So my son is Emirates and Netihad wannabe. You inspire him so much. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much as well. Have you ever flown to Vietnam before? Yes. Yes, I have. And um, I really loved... Uh, I loved uh, Vietnam, Saigon, I believe. I went to the Mekong Delta. Yeah, I have a photo on the Mekong Delta and I have those Vietnamese hats. Obviously, I I had to go full travel mode with the Vietnamese hat on. <laughs> so that was quite uh, quite cool, yeah. Uh, we, we were going along the Mekong Delta. You know, we visited the city. Um, I have drank that snake alcoholic drink. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it was very strong, vigorous. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, Vietnam was cool. Can you visit India? Uh, yeah, I don't know if now, but... Alex, please, if you don't have experience, what should you do? You should get experience. That's it. Get experience. It's not a big deal. Mm, hi, do you have chef on board in Etihad? So I just talked about this on a recent video, actually. About the chefs um, and FMB. So we used to have, ladies and gents, we used to have on board chefs in uh, first class. Butlers in the residence. So you remember the residence, you've seen the the videos online about the residents, you know, the the highest experience in all airlines, you know, that you can have was on the residence, ladies and gents. So that was basically a private suite in, in the Airbus A380. It's like a private apartment. You have a uh, your suite, you have a hallway with a bathroom and your bedroom in the sky on an Etihad plane, right? 
that used to be the case. That used to be the case uh, when we were flying the treaties. But now with the pandemic, we don't fly them anymore. So we don't really have the residence anymore, right? But anyway, on this residence, we used to have something called the butler, which is a specialized cabin crew uh, that is trained in a more, I don't know, professional way, in a more professional way with attention to details and many other things. And they basically take care of those VIP passengers that we have in the residence. Now, I've been in a residence myself to see it, to visit it. I even promoted it at one of a few of our Etihad events from the promotional team. It's quite it's quite something. Casey Neistat, if you type Casey Neistat Etihad, you will find the, the video is like maybe 40 million views on YouTube. It's quite amazing. Uh, I, I recommend you to see that video. Uh, you will... Um, you will see the residents and uh, his vlogs. And, you know, Casey Neistat vlogs are all, always cool. And I would say he was one of my inspiration to start a YouTube channel. Casey Neistat, quite a guy. Google him. Anyway, so basically the residents... Um, I'm starting a subject. I go like this all around the subject. And nobody understands anything at the end of it. The residence has the butler, the first class has the chef the business class has the fmb and then there's the rest of the cabin crew you know cabin manager cabin senior fa fj but not anymore because since covid you know things changed we don't have the butlers anymore we don't have the chefs anymore we don't have the fmbs anymore now the designation is you start as economic class cabin crew you go to business class that's what i'm about to do now soon inshallah then you go back to economy but you go as a uh, cabin senior there's also the option to go to first class as a first class cabin crew and then there is the cabin manager which is in charge of, of the whole aircraft the whole aircraft so i talked about this on the previous video you can actually take a look uh but uh, yeah we don't have the designation of a chef or a FMB or a butler anymore. We don't have that uh, designation at the moment. I don't know what will happen in the future. You know, things come and go. But uh, yeah, I hope you are better after your surgery, man. Have you ever been to Turkey? If yes, how it was? So I have never been to Istanbul except for connection flights. <laughs> I know the Istanbul airport, but not the city. And the city, obviously, is one of the most beautiful cities, right, in the world. And everybody says so. And, uh, yeah, I even I, I have a few days off. I should actually just visit Istanbul, to be honest. I should visit Istanbul. But I've been to Antalya. In 2013, I, uh, I was on a, uh, let's say, vacation. And I had the whole you know, five-star hotel experience in Turkey. And there's, you know, it's, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Services, services in Turkey are great, especially when it comes to hotels, restaurants, food. Brilliant. Brilliant Turkey. Uh, yeah, okay, where are we now? Where are we now with the comments? I applied for the major three Middle Eastern airlines. I'm waiting for the online interviews. I'm kind of leaning more towards Qatar and Emirates, but my Etihad application seems to be promising. Well, I hope, I hope so. I hope, uh, I hope so. I am I'm happy to hear that. Uh, fingers crossed for you. Uh, what do you think from which country you have? more subscribers i'm from india well i guess you you know already i'll just go to the stats and i'll tell you so i'm going now to my youtube stats let's see what the analytics tells us about who's the most subscribed all right so you want the for the subscribers or the uh, yeah audience here we are audience um All right, Hi, let's take the views. Let's take the views. Top geographies for 
the views in the lifetime of my YouTube channel. India is the first place with 17.4%. So those are the bulk of my views. The most views I got was from India, 17.4%. United, United Arab Emirates, 9.3% views. Obviously, I live here. I make content, content about Abu Dhabi and Dubai sometimes, so I expect that. The number three comes Romania with 8.0%. It's my home home country and I have a few videos in Romanian language so I guess that's what they came from and also my Instagram you know people know I'm from Romania number four comes United Kingdom with 4.8 percent and number five is United States with 4.6 those are my top five countries as uh, in views ever from my uh, channel <laughs> India has 117,000 views that I have on my channel are from India. That's 17%. So again, India, UAE, Romania, United Kingdom, and United States. Then comes Australia, Philippines, Germany, Thailand, Indonesia, Morocco, Malaysia. Okay, cool. So quite a diverse, uh, quite diverse audience. Quite a diverse audience uh, on my YouTube channel, and I'm really happy for that. Uh, at the point when I made my channel, when I started to post, because my channel was always up and down, like, okay, I have some time I post, I have some dead time, and I have some time I post as well. Uh, and at the point, I was actually thinking, because I made a few videos in Romanian language, I was thinking, should I keep the channel for Romania only? Should I just make videos in Romanian language? Or should I just go full English? Because... I wouldn't say there's, yeah, there's more potential, but there's more, let's say there's more reach, right? So there was those two options. Either I, I do the channel in Romanian or I go full throttle. I go international and I speak in English. So yeah, English one. So then I have an international audience here on this small YouTube channel, but entertaining, hopefully. Um, all right. Uh, just a few more comments and that's it. We're going to wrap it up because we're already one hour and a half, guys. I have to eat something. Um, <laughs> actually, there's not a reason. But one hour, 28 minutes, guys. It's already something. I mean, really, we're, we're chatting for a long time. Um, okay. Where was I with the comment? reading the comments have you ever saw someone famous in flight um yeah i think i do a, a lot of travel vloggers like sam chui you know sam chui uh vips like shakes um yeah we had a lot of shakes the wives of the shakes you know a lot of things like that um Manchester, Manchester City teams, um, like, sorry, Manchester City players, football players, MMA players, uh, <laughs> I'm talking gibberish, MMA fighters. Uh, yeah, I think even Dana White was at the point on board. Not on my flight, though. That was not on my flight. I don't know. I, I don't have many things in mind right now about famous people because um, I, I just forget. Like, it's... I don't know. But obviously, a lot of people, they fly they fly with us a lot of times. And especially if you're in business or first, first class, yeah, it can be a lot of famous people. Absolutely. Uh, how many lay over in the month? How many hours? Okay, let me just look. I don't think I talked about the hours in my previous roster video. Let's see. Now my tea is very cold right now. Uh, yeah, so for the month of January... I didn't save the screenshot. Uh, I would say around 100 hours of flying per month that was it 
<laughs> and he had to pay you for the PR you're doing for them. Great videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, it's it's the main purpose of the YouTube channel wasn't initially just to talk about it. He had, but obviously it's one of the main points of my life. So I'm talking about it. it yeah, obviously. Uh, but you guys want to know a lot of things about living here, about life here, about uh, the airline. So we are talking about it. Um, do you do you have any Indian male or female cabin crew friends in the company? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, of course I do. Of course I do. Uh, I recently flown with uh, Indian uh, cabin manager that I know her for a long time. She's such a great person. Uh, let's see. How much time to get promoted to business class from economy? So before before I came to Etihad in 2016, let's say 2015, 16, six months, right? You joined the airline in six months, you're working in business class. It was just such a fast expansion, guys. It was just craziness, pure craziness. But now it's not like this anymore, obviously. But uh, just because of the new joiners and a lot of people joining in, now it's going to start to become faster. So I would say right now uh, somebody can expect economy to business from three to five years. Maybe in the near future, less. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's uh, that's a good answer. I'll stick to that answer. Uh, all right. Let's see what we have. Um, have you ever seen, uh, cabin crawl out of vlogging flight? Uh, so I, I really try to avoid it. Like I don't want to just feel myself like crazy on board. It's, you know, I don't want to be unprofessional towards the job, the colleagues or the passengers. So I wouldn't be able to just, hey, make a vlog on board. And, you know, it's 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 not it's not ideal. But I do make some pictures, videos from time to time. It's it's OK. You know, it's it actually Etihad doesn't mind that, you know, promoting the airline. I mean, you know, just taking pictures of yourself, you know, the uniform and with your colleagues and everything. But if you're going the extra mile to vlog the flight when you should maybe work instead, you know, it's it's not uh, it's not the best thing. So I guess a balance blended in with professionalism should be there. Hello from your KLM friends in Amsterdam, greetings, greetings, right back to you, my friends. Uh, Etihad doesn't fly to your country, right? No, no, Etihad doesn't fly to Romania at the moment, hopefully soon. Uh, love from Kolkata, greetings from Abu Dhabi, guys. Hello from Morocco. I recently fell upon your channel and I love it. You fell upon your channel, sounds good. Um, Thank you very much. I'm happy that you did, uh, Yusra. I appreciate it. Greetings. How are you after the nose surgery? So, guys, the nose surgery is okay. I'm I'm just looking forward. I'm just looking forward to have um, a proper breathing experience. That will be in a few days after they remove something from here. They still I still have some some things up my nose. <laughs> So yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that um, in a few days. After that, I think I can breathe properly. Hey Alex, been wanting to catch you out. A uh, new joiner here. Hello, my friends, and welcome. You are welcome here, and I'm happy you are on this stream. Hello, I'm from India. Awesome, guys. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here. Hello from Brazil. Have you ever been to Brazil? I wish to. I have, guys. Um, I've been. No, what am I talking about? Brazil? No, no. Have I been to Brazil? No, I haven't been to Brazil. I haven't been to Brazil yet. 
<laughs> I was thinking of something else, sorry. I have not been to Brazil yet, unfortunately. Uh, Etihad stopped flying to Brazil, I think, in 2017 to Sao Paulo. And I didn't have that flight, so I didn't catch that. Um, we still have a Brazilian cabin crew flying uh, flying with us, but we don't have the Sao Paulo flight anymore at the moment, at the moment. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll have it soon. All right, guys, guys, we're going to wrap it up. It's more than an hour and a half at this point. So I would like to thank everybody for watching this the stream. Thank you, everybody, as well, re-watching this stream because I will just keep this um, on my channel, I think. I will not unlist it. I will just keep it public, uh, the live stream. So, yeah, guys, um, please like like comment subscribe to my youtube channel if you're not subscribed yet you know the drill um yeah follow my tiktok as well it's a new page i pinned it in my um, in my live comments as you guys can see the tiktok account is there i don't have much on it it's basically an empty and an empty account and i will try to follow whoever follows me maybe the first 50 people that follow me i'll just follow you back just to show you some love uh, we're gonna start rolling um and uh, yeah thank you thank you everybody take care take care and uh i wish you a pleasant night bye bye